Hello, this is Badminton Beginner Tom. The player we are going to discuss today is Ng Tzu Young from Malaysia. In the recent 2023 All England Open Badminton Championships, he managed to make a comeback with his tactics of keeping the shuttle going down and rushing to the net combined with his five advantages. In this edition of Strategy Analysis, let's have a deep review of Ng Tzu Young's performance. Advantage 1, Excellent Net Play. Tzu Yong's net play in this match was excellent, showing clear technical superiority. There was close net return to spinning net shot. There was the daring to return by cross-court plays. There was also the obscurity of push shots. From my point of view, Zhu Yang's spinning and cross-court net shots were more than impressive. What I didn't expect was that the deceptive push shots toward the baseline was the finishing touch. He successfully drew most of Axelson's attention to the net with his spinning and cross-court net shots and deceptions, and this has exposed Axelson's vacancy of awareness in the backcourt, which led to his repeatedly intercepting without adequate preparation. But it's very, very difficult to see in real time. We can't even see it probably in, uh, in replay. Missed it. Missed it. This was the point where Zhu Yong did a great job. Not only the quality of his spinning and cross-court net shots, but also the protection for his push shots, which led to multiple errors of Axelson. Advantage 2 – Variations of Smashes To beat Axelson, Ng Zhu Yong used the similar tactic with Naraoka, but compared to Naraoka, who is 173 cm in height, Zhu Yong, who is 182 cm can catch the shuttles faster, with higher stroke point and more options. Therefore, compared with the match against Naraoka, the defensive pressure on Axelson was much bigger, he was ready to defend the forecourt, but the shuttle went to the backcourt. Yeah. Oh. Good clear. Yeah. He was ready to defend a full strike, but the return was a light strike. And ready to play. He was ready to defend the straight, but the strike went cross court. That's a great smash from the young man. Oh, what a shot! Don't worry. What I wanted to say was what they said when they changed ends. When Zhu Yong did go full force to attack, it is either by increasing the threat through accurate placements as long as possible in between rallies. or by body hits targeting Axelson's weakness of being tall and unable to dodge. Oh. Oh, that's good follow up, isn't it, Steve? That's it. From With this, when Axelson tried to get the real thoughts of his opponent, he didn't expect that Zhu Yong had more than one real thought. Zhu Yong turned his advantage and height into variations in attacks. He managed to beat Axelson's defense repeatedly even though his physical strength was not that strong. Tom was deeply impressed by the magnitude of his thoughts. So, facing the repeated keeping the shuttle going down from Zhu Yong. How should Axelson tackle it? Very simple. That is, do a good defense and following, then wait for the opportunity to intercept the strike of his opponent. Once Axelson was able to defend properly with quality following, 
he would be able to trade off his running at forecourt for opponents running back and forth on the court, to realize a victory in physical strength balance. Over time, Zhu Yong will be the first to lose physical strength, and his movements will either be deformed, delivering a busted strike and being intercepted by Axelson. Either he will be forced to play lofted shots and be counter-attacked by Axelson. Either he will have to let go and fight. So, although Zhu Yong was so well prepared for the tactic of keeping the shuttle going down and rushing to the net, but he still has to be prepared for the worst case when the tactic can no longer work. How can Zhu Yong resolve this challenge? Advantage 3, a big picture defensive view. When the keeping the shuttle going down and rushing to the net cannot be done, Zhu Yong will timely indicate the weakness by lofted shots which are extremely high clear or lift. Firstly, the fully lofted shots allow the shuttle to fall vertically at the baseline of his opponent, thus restraining Axelson's powerful attack. Secondly, a fully lofted shot slows down the pace, allowing himself to catch his breath from physical deficit, and also gaining sufficient time for defense. On top of that, Zhu Yong also played with great perception. By keeping an eye on the trajectory of his opponent's racket, he was able to anticipate the direction of his opponent's smashes and make specific defensive moves on many occasions. Let's, um, just... Good defense. Good night shot. He was even able to make counterattack defense sometimes. This is the wisdom of the wise and brave. Attacking with bravado may not necessarily win, and indicating weakness by lofted shots may not necessarily lose. Even if in the end he still couldn't resist, he still had to retreat and force Axelson into more exhaustion in order to create some more uncertainties for the final game. Thanks to this great big picture defensive view, Zhu Yong was able to withstand the final surge of Axelson's counterattack at the end of the deciding game. His racket, or did his opponent just miss it? Have a look at this. But I, I actually think there's a mistake from Axelson. I think his racket is over the net. But it's very, very difficult to see in real time. We can't even see it properly in, uh, in replay. Mystic. Language. Look at the disappointment. He's up tight at the moment, is Axelson. Mr. Advantage for capabilities to survive long rallies. In this match, Zhu Yong exhibited better stabilities during long rallies, while Axelson has made more mistakes. Particularly, the two misjudgments in the key points of the first and last games can clearly show that Axelson was distracted. In fact, Axelson is clearly stronger than Zhu Yong in terms of capabilities, and I dare to say that many errors are one of the main reasons for this upset. Advantage 5, Thoroughly Master. During his execution of keeping the shuttle going down and approaching to the net tactics, Zhu Yong used every possible means to beat Axelson's defense. He incorporated variations of attacks, accurate net plays, stable plays in longer rallies, and lofted shots when it was necessary. He made up the deficiency of competence through his skills, bringing out the best of human initiative. At the last second, Axelson was finally shaken inside. A misjudgment. A slightly panicked return. An accurate placement by the opponent. A mistake in lifting. The Malaysian boying Zhu Yong successfully left his name in the list of Axelson killers. And, and 
Cey Young has beaten the defending champion, Victor Axelsen. The biggest win of his career. Axelsen's strength lies in his dominant power attack plus large defensive areas. His strong physical ability has allowed him to rise to the top with just his power attack and defense. Yet, somehow, he has fallen into reliance on his ability. He overemphasizes his ability and neglects the use of skills, thus giving his opponents the opportunity to win by trickery. The victory of Zhu Young is a victory of skills, but also a victory of the mindset of match preparation. Keeping the shuttle going down inherently has the effect of replacing defense with offense, restraining Axelson's strong attacks. Moreover, keeping the shuttle going down also beat Axelson's defense with the integration of skills, accurate net plays, variations of attacks and stabilities during longer rallies. Axelson is very powerful but not unbeatable. He has already been studied by the coaching teams of various countries, with specific solutions presented. So. Tom think Axelson should improve his strategy at this stage. I wonder how you guys think about this. Welcome to the comment section and discuss. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe my channel if you want to see more shows of the same. I'm Tom. See you guys next time.